Well, hello everybody. Today we are doing a, kind of an unboxing, unpacking, maybe some assembly, definitely some assembly, and we're going to run it and everything of the DK2 12 inch stump grinder. Now, I'm going to tell you straight off, I'm just going to do all this as it happens. So, this is going to be a longer video. It's bound to be very boring for some of you, or some of you might just like it. I don't know, but um, I've already pulled the lid off the crate just to kind of check everything inside and make sure everything's there. I'm pretty sure we're good. Um, this is listed as a refurbished model. I paid $1,200 for it. It was like $600 off what I could have got it for at any like Home Depot or Lowe's or online or anything. I bought it directly from DK2 for $1,150, something like that. But uh, yeah, so let's just... Uh, get going on it and make sure everything's the rest of everything's good to go I'm gonna try to disassemble the rest of this crate but the bottom I did notice I saved you the trouble of watching my son and I put it up on the thousand pound gorilla cart and getting it in here and getting it off the uh, stump grinder the grinding disc is sticking out the bottom of the crate um, it says return I don't know why it was returned everything seems to be there and seems in good working order it's never been run so anyway without further ado let's tear into this crate and see what we got trying to have you guys in a good position which is probably going to be next to impossible like i said we're kind of going to go through just one take on here and uh it's going to be what it is it's what can you do if I feel like anything is absurdly ridiculous then I'll work on that in editing but I think we'll be good my goodness trying to make it as painless as possible but it's probably going to be significantly painful I'm tempted to just grab a hammer and go with this crate and just turn it into kindling <laughs> you know what I mean but we'll see what we see like I said this part of the video is surely to be fairly long and drawn out it's kind of funny the uh top of this crate was not such a pain in the rear. Hopefully that doesn't wash out the entire video. Other than the wheel hanging out, there was not really any s significant damage to the crate. Like I said, this was listed as a as refurbished. 
and somebody did write return on it but I can't figure out why they returned it because the way I purchased it on the website it was in new unused perfectly good mechanically sound condition got some tires full air are these even pneumatic oh yes they are yes indeed they look tubeless too full air good see that's how those that's how these clips are supposed to be easy to open I just put my knee down in some bar and chain oil Half of you aren't even watching anymore. Little baggie of accessories there. All right. start unpacking stuff now here's our tow hitch that's funny off-road only we'll just set this outside That is like a 100% highway legal tow hitch, but it says off-road only on it. Let's go with these. All right. Can start really getting a look at it now I mean it looks good to me like I said I don't know I'll take you guys off there actually so you could see what I'm seeing so right there you could see there's a hole in the bottom of the crate that the grinding wheel was going down into so it said on the uh, online that it said shipping crate damage slash scratches on paint um, so that's kind of all I got to go off of you know what I did notice when I peeked in the crate is the hour meter bracket looks like it bumped up against the crate and it was bent but yeah see it's got a little nick in the hour meter but uh could be bent right back and look 0, 0.0 hours I mean everything looks to me everything looks good Got a bolt there I'm guessing that's what this nut goes to can we just kind of slap this on here real quick I'm concerned about missing hardware since there is a hole in the crate so we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there but I've already found one nut on the ground outside where the crate was left oh here's a bunch of nuts and bolts here Let's look. okay so let me get you guys back up on the tripod and uh, start getting this thing 
assembled. All righty, let's get this guy up and out of the way. There's a handle. This is going to be our brush guard slash axle and everything. You see some more nuts in here. Let's just pull this bad boy out real quick and see what we got. There's a couple lock nuts. There's a washer. Nothing else in there. I'm guessing those are what's used to hold all this together. Hey, I just knocked my receiver off my pocket. There we go. You guys still good? So up here, I've got a lock nut and then a nut bolt washer and everything. I'm kind of hoping, let's see what we got under this contraption. I don't know yet if we've got all the parts. I mean, I know we've got all the parts, keys. I just don't know if we have all the nuts and bolts. I do believe there's some missing now, now that I'm looking at it. to put them all together if we can is there any underneath it I'm not seeing anything although There's definitely some shipping crate damage on the bottom and yes I see some scratches in the paint on the bottom but none of this I don't think any of it really matters okay so the goal first things first is to get this thing on wheels how in the hell am I gonna do that Wow this is gonna be interesting I guess first things first, actually get the wheels on. Now these wheels have no bearings. They're just, but I don't imagine it's not, you're not pulling it down the highway. So I do believe I will get my son out here to at least help me get it up on the axle. So that is good there. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. I will be right back. Okay, so there's two options. I can pick up the machine and you can roll the axle underneath it, or you can pick up the machine and I'll roll the axle underneath it. Okay. What do you want to do? You want to roll the axle? Uh, pick it up. Okay. <clears throat> so, you want to pick it up? Yeah, at least let me try. Okay, well, hang on. Let me let me get into position. Couple pieces of equipment here to. So what I would do is grab under here and under here and just lift up. That's that's what I would do if it were me. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. 
Well, my camera froze, so I'm not sure how much I missed, but it was pretty straightforward. Just bolt stuff together and go. Kind of grab the tripod. I uh, scooted down to the store real quick to get some uh, oil. I just got regular old multi-grade 1030. Um, they say they say that's what it uses, so. Who am I to question the instructions? So I'm going to get the oil in it. I think what happened is my camera overheated. I'm not sure how, but that's what I think happened. Let's get you guys situated in here. Let's get some Earl in it. I'm not prepared to uh, <clears throat> grind a stump right now. So that won't be happening today but this video won't be out today either so I, i'm not sure if i'm going to be including that in this video or not but uh we're definitely going to start it i guess i'm going to have to keep an eye on the camera i hate doing that constantly looking to see if it's still on but you know you figure you pay 400 dollars for a gopro it would stay on but i guess that's too much to ask so we are putting what the instructions said a multi-grade just your standard Ace Hardware non-synthetic 1030. I'm actually going to, since I can't see anything, there should be a plug on both sides, right? Yes, indeed there is. So I will keep an eye on this side as we fill it because I'm not entirely sure how much Earl it's going to take. See how much it's got in it already. <clears throat> No, we could use a little more. I'm so used to the Briggs engines where you just put a cord in and call them good. We still going? Yep, good. I hope it didn't miss too much. I don't know how much. I just, when I finished the little clip, I went to hit stop on the camera and noticed it was already stopped and turned off and it was hot, and, which is weird because I haven't had that. I've had that issue when recording in 4K on my uh, Hero 7, but not on this new GoPro. I haven't had that issue yet. And I say new, this isn't like new, new. It's a, it's a Hero 9 Black, but I mean, it's new enough to not have that problem, right? Yep, 
You know what? I'm going to pull this oil plug away from in case it starts coming out this other side. I don't want it to coat it with oil. There we go. We're starting to leak now. Wow, that was almost a full quart. Seems to me it should hold way more than that, but we'll run it. We'll run it and then we'll check it again. You guys still going? Good. Actually, I'm gonna grab a flashlight and actually take a peek down in there. Wait, I got my phone. My phone has a light on it. Right there. Yeah, she's got some Earl. Is it enough Earl? I'm always confused whether you have to thread these in and then unthread them to check the oil or not. I don't even know if they're that sensitive. You know what? I'm putting the rest of it in there because that's substantially low. Regardless of how I check it, that's substantially low. Come on. All right. I got to put this somewhere so I don't get oil all over everything. Right in the garbage it goes. Oh, I have to set up the hour meter before I start it. So we'll be doing that in just, just momentarily. Oh, that's got to be good. Where'd my... The light on this phone's not too bright. No, it's still low. Really? Are you kidding me? All right. I mean, I'm, who am I to question the dipstick? The dipstick questioning the dipstick. So there's one cord in. I need to check all the... linkages and everything and make sure everything's set right before I get too crazy on trying to start things up. Let that soak down in for a minute. I'm going to go grab the manual and double check the setup on this hour meter and we'll be right back. All right. You guys are getting quite low on the battery, so... We'll be figuring that out soon. I don't know if the hour meter is a Collier thing or a DK2 thing. All right, so there's nothing. 
There's nothing in the DK2 manual about the hour meter. Now we're just taking a peek in the uh, engine manual. Nothing. I want to say it's five turns around the uh, spark plug wire. Yeah, what's up? In your room? And how do you know this? All right. Now that I've killed 10% of my battery trying to get my microphone to work again. We are fueled up. We are, we're about ready to go. Just got to deal with this hour meter. And then we will be ready. And I believe it was like five... So the goal is, is to start it up, let it run for a minute, shut it down, check the, you know, the, there we go, that'll make this easier, check the uh, oil, once it pumps the oil through the engine, and then run it for a little bit, double check, make sure our hour meter's working properly. I'm going to have to tape that on there, aren't I? Yep. All right. One thing that concerns me a little bit about this hour meter is this extra wire. This just hanging out. I don't know what the deal with that is, but I'm not going to pay any attention to it for right now. I'm just going to... Three... Four... Okay. I need to get this... So the hour meters that I've been used to in the past, they have like a like a solid copper wire that goes around the spark plug. This is a loose, like a braided copper wire. So it, you know, the other ones they just form to the wire as you as you wrap them around. This is not forming to the wire. So that's kind of a pain in the rear, but. We'll manage it. One way or another. I'm just hoping it functions properly. It should. That should be all we need. I saw questions on how to hook the hour meter up and I saw people respond saying the direction said how many times you wrap it around but I just looked through them and I disagree the directions did not tell me anything okay I'm gonna have to zip tie the crap out of that okay so how hard is this gonna be to pull over is our key off our key is in the on position now it's in the off how hard is this to pull over oh she's got some torque Alright, let's proceed in fueling. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna fill this whole tank up. That would be unnecessary. This spark ignition engine complies with Canadian standard. <laughs> oh, this did ship from Canada, by the way. Yeah, that was kind of odd because I saw they had a facility in Las Vegas and then they shipped this from Canada. And I'm in California, for those that, that don't know. Okay. So let's get down here. So fuel on, choke on, it's pretty cut and dry.
All that's left is to fire her up, guys. Everything looks good. Everything, we're back at an idle. As soon as we start it, this thing's gonna start spinning. It's clear. Yeah, okay. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Ignition on. Okay. What are we not doing right here? Off on. Oh, the fuel was already on. I turned it off. Okay, let's try it now. Oh. Well, there you have it. That thing is definitely spinning up there. It's a lot quieter than I thought. Take a peek at our Earl. Oh, where'd my light go? Where'd my light go? It's over here. All the way back over here. I had to take a break because my daughter came out and said she had a mouse. I think it was on recording. I should leave it on there. Said she had a mouse or a rat in her bedroom. I went in there and I found an alligator lizard. So we had to move some furniture around and catch that little rascal. So we got him. I'll show you him here in a minute. As soon as I dig done checking my Earl. All right, we're good to run it for a few minutes. Let's run it for a few minutes and I'll show you an alligator lizard. Ready? Start it back up. We're just gonna let it idle for a few minutes. And watch out for that spinning wheel. What do you think about that guy, huh? We're gonna let him go here in a little bit. One thing I wanna do, I gotta run it for at least a minute or two. I wanna see if that hour meter's actually counting. See if I got it set up properly. I mean, the, the hourglass is blinking, so that should mean it's counting. Oh, she rips. I like it a lot. I take a video for the Facebook page. Good enough. We've got no minutes on our hour meter yet though. I wonder if it's gotta go, you know what, it might have to go 10 minutes. I won't make you guys look through that. that 
that wheel is down there spinning like crazy. Oh, I can smell that fresh machine oil burning off the exhaust. I think this is where we end this video. Watch that spinning wheel. I think this is where we end this video and uh, call this a success. I might think about um, grinding a stump before I upload this. Either way, it's coming. You guys know it is. Anyway, guys, this is the 14 horsepower 12 inch DK2 OPG777 stump grinder. That was your little unboxing assembly. I know I lost some video in there. I'm not sure how much, but hopefully it wasn't a lot. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Look forward to seeing this machine quite a bit on this channel. Thanks a million for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you next time.